we're going to start uh, round 11, which is going to have some decreases in it. So for it says for round 11, we're going to single crochet in the next two single crochets. Then we're going to decrease and we'll repeat that sequence five times and then we'll, so that it has a total of 15 stitches. So we're going from 20 stitches around to 15. So we're doing five decreases at regular intervals. So let me show you. I'm going to do my two single crochets. So you just one, two. So one and two. And I'm going to show you the invisible decrease. That's I think it's the best way to decrease. Now normally, I mean, you could just skip one and decrease that way. But it would leave kind of a weird little um, horizontal uh, uh, loop there that you can see. Another way is you can do what's called a you single crochet two together where you just go under both loops, grab a loop, go under the next stitch, both loops, grab a loop like that, and then single crochet them together. So that's another way to do it, which is called a, like I said, single crochet two together. But you can see that it kind of leaves that diagonal um, line, which again, it just doesn't blend in very well. So for invisible decrease, what you're going to do in this time is you're going to, instead of going under both loops, you're going to go in the front loop only. You're going to catch that front loop of the stitch. So again, it's just boop right in that front loop. And then you kind of twist and swing with with the, the, the head of the shaft just barely popping out. You're going to swing it and then go through the next front loop of the next stitch like that. So you see now I've got two front loops on the hook. And then the back loops are, are not doing anything. They're just going you know, to stay there. So with that, those three loops on the hook, you're going to grab and yarn over, pull through just those two first loops, and now you've got two loops on the hook. And to finish, you're going to yarn over again and pull through. And that is your invisible decrease. And you can see it makes a pretty convincing stitch there that kind of blends in. So then the trick is when you're going to the next stitch, it's see there's you're gonna have to kind of hop a little bit. See, this is our next stitch here, and sometimes it's deceiving because you want to go through the you think oh I'll go through this stitch, but no, you want to make sure you go through that next stitch, and you're gonna go one and two. So you can see how it's kind of cinched it up, and that's kind of pinching two uh, single crochets together. So now you're going to want to, the trick with invisible decrease is the work is going to want to fight against you. It's going to want to pull it so it's looser, so it can go back to its original shape. But you're going to want to, you're going to have to do a little more tight tension than you normally would. So again, go through that front loop and swing it around, go through the next front loop. Now keep your tension really tight in this hand, pulling that way as you yarn over and pull through two and keep it keep it real snug just in fact you want it almost so snug that you can barely get that yarn over through through that uh, loop okay and then keep it snug again you don't because this one will want to tend to get loose too so keep that nice and snug and then let's see so we're going to go to this next stitch is just here and then one and then two All right, and then another decrease, and we're going to go through the front loop, and the front loop, and then again, keep this nice and tight, and you're going to pull it through those two loops, and then finish it, and then one, and two, and then another decrease, and then one, uh oh, I think I've got my stitch count off. Oh, let's see. One and a two. Yeah, I've got so and this is actually a good teaching moment because it's like this should I should have ended here in this stitch. So something went wrong with my stitch count. So let me count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So I should have two. No, I should have two left, so they could do my decrease. So 
Um, I'm just going to pull out that whole row. So it's, it's we call this, you rip it out or frogging because it sounds like a frog when you say rip it, rip it. So I'm just, it's, it's just in, instead of trying to figure out where the mistake was, it's just sometimes it's just faster to rip out the round and then go back and, and count a little more carefully this time. So again, I'm going to go one, two, and then decrease, and then one, two, decrease, and then one, two, and then decrease. I could have, you know, what I should have done is also counted the round before it to make sure I hadn't dropped a stitch anywhere. And then one, two, decrease, and then one, and then two, and then a decrease. Okay, so that is correct this time. And if I'm gonna count, let's see, we should have 15 around here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, okay. Yeah, you, sometimes I mess up on those decreases. They're a little trickier. Sometimes I have to go a little slower. Make sure I get it right. Uh, now, for round 12, I'm just going to single crochet in each single crochet around to make a 15. So, just easy peasy. Make sure you get each stitch. And I've got my, um, my middle finger now inside this hole because it's kind of small. I'm kind of pinching the work as I go to hold it. And just uh, FYI, I like to hold my hook like a pencil. Um, there's also called a knife hold. Um, I, it, uh, I've seen on other cro crochet tutorials. Uh, so, you know, if you're new and you want to try, you could try the knife hold as well. Let's see if that is more comfortable, natural for you. All right, so there's 15 around. This time we're going to, um, now we're gonna stuff almost to the last round. So I'm gonna pull my working loops so it's nice and big so it won't accidentally pop out. And then I'm gonna lay it on the outside, get it out of the way. Um, I'm gonna grab my stuffing. And there we go. And I like to tear off about this much at a time. Um, to pop in there and you're going to mold it in, make it sure it's, I'm, I would do it like, um, kind of a medium firmness. I like, I like to do my amigurumis pretty firmly. Um, and it's important to have tight stitching so that the stuffing doesn't show through. Like if it's too you know, if I, and if I stuff it too much, it'll look like that where I can see the stuffing. But so, um, as you're stuffing it, thinking, think about that, um, about, um, how much the stitches are stretching, um, where you, I think it's, it's, or, I try to get it where it's firm enough as, as f I, tr <laughs> as firm as I can get it without the, um, stuffing showing through that's it's kind of what I go for all right so that looks pretty good and and then I like to take my finger and kind of make sure there's no uh lumpy spots kind of even it out all right so it's got a uniform firmness and uh you know you want to leave a little bit so you can still crochet without the stuffing getting caught in your hook. All right, now we're going to do row around um, 13 and we're going to single crochet in the next single crochet and then decrease. We will repeat that five times. So, and it'll make a total of 10 stitches around. So we just single crochet and then a decrease. So go through that front loop and it's getting a little tight, so 
go carefully and slowly. There we go. And then another single crochet. And then a decrease. And then another single crochet. And a decrease. And another single crochet. And a decrease. Another single crochet. And our last decrease. Okay. All right, and let's count. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now you're going, to, if you need to, you're going to put in a little more stuffing before we do our very last round. Kind of give them a little firm bottom. A little baby Yoda's bottom. You know, I always wonder when I watch The Mandalorian about diapers, you know, I'm thinking, okay, so here's this 50 year old child, right? And, you know, he's pretty much a baby, you know, he has slipped in a little bassinet. I mean, he can walk and he can feed himself, but I think, you know, what, what would it be like changing a diaper for 50 years, changing diapers for 50 years? Just just boggles the mind I just think you know the Mandalorian who's like you know this is a rough and tough bounty hunter you know I can't I just can't and it never shows him like changing baby Yoda's you know sold under things so where you know maybe he's paper trained or <laughs> I don't know maybe he has a different system of, of waste management but it does, you know. I've I've raised I've raised three kids, so that kind of thing is, you know, on my mind. All right, so there's the stitch marker, and now I'm, for the last round, I'm going to just decrease five. So uh, just just a one decrease right there, and the next decrease, and a next decrease. And the next. And there's my last decrease. And there's the stitch marker. Okay, and you can see there's one, two, three, four, five around. All right, now the fun part, we get to finish off. So I'd like to pull, pull my working loop out a little bit. And I'm gonna cut this, give it about six inches because, and then pull that remaining loop out. So now it doesn't come undone, see? You can pull it and it doesn't frog. So now I'm going to take my stitch marker out and I'm going to see it and it kind of forms this kind of little funny, I don't know, step up where the last stitch wants to pop up, right? So we're going to finish this so it, it makes a nice smooth bottom. So I've got my nice little darning needle with the big eye. I'm going to put the tail through there. And then overlap it a couple inches. Now um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna whip stitch, which is I'm gonna go through the next stitch, just the front loops, and I'm gonna aim it out to the outside. So there's one, and then I go in the second front loop, and again aim it this way. And there's two. Don't pull it tight yet. So and then there's three, and then there's four, and five. And then I like to go back into the first one again to kind of finish it. And then, so there's six stitches and then I'm going to pull it nice and snug. Don't pull it so tight that you actually break the yarn, of course, but I like to put my fingernails kind of right by it and kind of make sure it's as tight as I can get it without busting anything. And now it's kind of a little, a little bit of a pimple there. So I like to massage the stuffing a little bit. And then finally, um, I'm going to do an overhand knot, so I'll go just through a, a, a post and loop it through again. This will just hold it in place, and then I go through that loop to make my overhand knot, like so. Oops, you know what, I don't think I, no, I got it. Okay, there we go like that, and now, to get rid of that little bump, I'm going to go down directly to the center, like that. And then I'm going to come out, like, at an angle about you know as far as I can do a needle length away pull it through and then give it a tug and that's going to kind of 
flatten out the bottom or even, you know, so it pulls that little pimple in so it's no longer popping out. So we got a nice round bottom. Now, at this point, I can just cut off the excess and you want to be careful not to, of course, not to cut the crochet work. So, but I like to pull it tight and then give it a snip close to the crochet work and then the tension will kind of pop it back into the uh, stuffing. If it doesn't, take your needle and kind of massage it until it disappears into the stuffing. And then you get to mold it and make sure there's no funny little bumps. So there, there's the finished uh, body, head and body. Yay! Alright, um, I'll do uh, the ears next. <laughs> 